We're in a game of League, and I'm about to show you how to win your games as Samira. What is up, guys? My name is Meeps, and welcome back to yet another League of Legends video. So today, we are playing in none other than Samira. This champion is an absolute beast in terms of snowballing, and she is, in my opinion, one of the most fun ADCs in the entire game. So I really hope you guys are hyped for this one. Uh, for those of you who are new in here, then what I'm going to be doing in this video is that I'm going to be teaching you guys how to play Samira both in the early, mid and late game. So the overall game strategy on this champion and what you need to be thinking about. So I hope you guys are very much going to find this helpful. What I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to use this game as like a live example where I'm going to let you guys in on my train of thought, what I'm thinking, why I'm doing certain things. And hopefully you'll be able to learn quite a lot from this video. Anyways, if you are new in here, make sure to go down below, click the subscribe button, join into our awesome community. And also, if you do enjoy this video, then make sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And lastly, if you want to hang out with me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. All right. Anyways, as we're getting into it, uh, our team had a two man invade, uh, which of course didn't go great. And I wasn't a part of it. Which is, of course, in a sense, my fault, but two man invades are rarely a, a, a good idea. Anyway, this is gonna put everything kind of on the edge because Kha'Zix is gonna have a really, really, really rough early game. Because uh, us going up there and leasing for him now is actually kind of too late. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, as we're getting into this, uh, I wanna start off by talking a little bit about what's it, what, like why you're picking Samira and what you gotta be thinking about when choosing this champion all right so first of all as i shortly like teased then samira is one of the champs in the game with like the one of the highest like snowball potentials she is this champion is very much a champ like a yasu katarina or even a little bit like draven like if she gets ahead she's a real freaking pain to deal with uh she can really be a difficult champ to deal with uh, right here, I want to be a little careful because they actually have level 2 and we didn't. So, this play by or, uh, or Senna could very quickly go south. Alright. Right here, there's actually a chance for a first blunt. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take it. Could have gone. I should probably have gone for a flash play into a Q melee attack. And then we would have gotten first blunt there. But, yeah. Mistakes were made. I could definitely have get gotten a first blunt right there. All right, we are going to get the first blood there. Not clean, but it worked. All right, anyways, let's back to actually talking about this champion and how to play her. Um, so first of all, in terms of why you're picking this champion, it's because she has an extremely high snowball potential. She is, by nature, a team fighting champ. She's really, really good at team fighting. And this, of course, means that she likes playing around her team. In terms of this, uh, yeah, she has this very high snowball potential. She's a really, really strong team fighter. Uh, her W is one of the abilities in the game that really brings out uh, quite a lot for her team and even for herself because she can basically block very essential spells like, as an example, like an Orn old or along those lines. So your W is an absolutely insane tool can, that can actually potentially turn a fight around in your favor that otherwise wouldn't have been. One of the things with, and I don't want to say this is a pro or a con, depends how you look at it, but is that Samira is probably one of the hardest ADCs to play. Like, literally, she is not easy. Uh, she is a difficult champ to play. And there's an extremely high skill ceiling on her, meaning that you're always going to be learning on this champion. Even if you're extremely high elo, you're always going to be learning more and more about, okay, when is the right time to go in? Okay, how do I do this? How do I make these plays? So there is an extremely high skill ceiling on this champion. And it's a champ that will always keep you on your toes. So depending on what kind of player you are, this is kind of a pro or a con. Um, for me, I love it. I think it's amazing. I love the champs that, that, that keeps you learning and keeps you on your toes. But if you rather have a champ where you can stay very, very consistent then Samira is one of the harder ones to do that on. I'm not saying that you, of course, can't do it. That's definitely not what I'm saying. 
at it. You can, of course, be consistent, but it is always easier being consistent on a champ that is very simple, where there's very little room for mistake. Where Samira is one of those champs where there's a lot of room. Like, you can make a lot of mistakes on this champion. One, one wrong uh, jump in at the wrong time and you're dead. There's so many stuff that you can do uh, poorly on her because we'll talk more of this, uh, about this as we get into kind of the uh, team fight phase or the early to mi or the mid to late game about how she actually likes to, she needs to be careful, uh, about how she actually likes to go for team fights and the way she wants to play it. So in a way, you can think a little bit about Tamira as I think the best, the best um comparison i've ever heard is probably that she's kind of a mixture between a yasu and a katarina and i think that's very very true not only for her abilities but also kind of for her play style uh she has this very aggressive jump in style that is whoop, this might be really good actually i'm just gonna go for whatever i can here we're not gonna be able to get more but that was a really really nice one it's really really nice we did get the assist. We didn't do too much, but we did get the assist. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, about some of the, the cons of playing this champion. So first of all, uh, Samira is not very good when played from behind. Oh, we'll go on the turret here. We can. Oh, all right. I kind of failed some of my abilities there, but whatever. It was uh, it turned out fine anyway. All right. So some of the cons of playing Samira is that if this champion falls behind, then she tends to kind of be really bad. Uh, she really struggles at getting back into games. Um, so it's a champion where, as I said, you'll you it'll keep you learning because if you do fall behind. She really, really do struggle, especially as she has pretty short range, which means that other ADCs, uh, if she falls about behind, especially in laning phase, um, then she can very easily get punished really, really hard. And that can make the game an absolute nightmare for you. It can be so difficult figuring out how to make sure you get your CS and how to make sure you get back into the game. We'll talk more about this throughout uh, the video, but generally speaking, if she falls behind, this is where she really, really does struggle. All right. So that's, of course, some of the cons. We also, as we also talked about, the high skill cap can also be, be perceived as a con. Uh, but yeah, you could kind of think of this champion as either being kind of a feast in terms of you just getting absolute fed, smashing people, or femine. So basically, the things are going really poorly. It's generally how it goes with this champion. It's very much either one or the other. Um, the higher elo you do get, of course, you see them being more consistent and it's not as much that, but you'll see that especially around gold and below where people either get super fed on her and do really well or they do really, really poorly. It's rarely that I see kind of a, a middle ground for that. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to teach you guys a little bit more about how to stay more consistent on this champ because she's not necessarily the easiest one to do so on. In terms of how, like, what she likes to play together with, then personally, I think she works really well together with other, like, all-in champs, uh, like a Leona, things that really like to jump in their face and straight up duel them. And this is because, like, Samira is actually a really, really strong early game champion. Uh, she deals a ton of damage, uh, and you really want to use that this to your advantage. Also because against most adcs she will be able to block a pretty like a vital ability using her w which would is absolutely devastating for them in this case what we're playing here i can block this uh this severe uh q her her act or her her uh, boomerang which is absolutely devastating uh if i block that she's in a lot of trouble because a big part of her damage actually comes out of that one um all right so as you can see, what we want to try and do here in the laning phase, we have a couple of different types of laning phase. First of all, we could get shoved under turret, maybe because either they have more pushing potential or they're actually a lot stronger than we are. If this happens, then of course, you want to try and farm as safely as you can. If you're healthy on, on HP and you're, you're sitting in a scenario where 
uh, you may be playing with a Lona, then you can look for an all-in. Most all-ins you will potentially win, depending on the matchup. Um, otherwise, generally speaking, you want to try to... Uh, we'll just get that kill. There we go. All right. Uh, let's grab these if we can. Actually, mess that up. There we go. All right, and we can actually finish off our mole shield bow. All right, against most matchups, what you want to be doing is actually you want to try to keep the lane right here in the middle or just here at the edge before your turret. If you can do this, you're putting yourself in a really good scenario. And you might think, why is that, Meeps? Why do you want to stay here? Why don't I just shove them under turret? The reason for this is that you're pretty short range, which means you're going to struggle to actually poke them under turret. I'm not saying that you can never do this, but let me just finish explaining why i believe it's better for you to keep the lane somewhere in the middle here either here or here the basis for this is that since we have long uh, short range we most likely in engages will need a little like space to run down our opponents in case they start running we don't have we don't have the freedom of them of like poking them really far on the turret and if we're poking them on the turret well, then we're not going to be able to do so for very long because they can very quickly move out of the way. And right there, you can see a, a good example of just blocking the severe W or uh, boomerang, which is absolutely devastating for her in an all-in. Right here, I actually see this guy being alone, and I'm going to go ahead and punish it. So we're going to just sit here, poke her down as much as we can. We're not going to be able to kill, but we are going to be able to just pump out all of the HP from that one. And this is, again, as we talked about a little bit earlier, like Samira, once she's ahead, she's extremely hard to deal with uh, for the opponent. Uh, right now, we do see the uh, Kane topside, so we don't actually need to worry too much. There we go. We'll grab these. And again... The reason why I did this jump was exactly what I was hoping for, was that Alistar was going to go ahead and cancel his back, which is actually pretty great for us. All right. So in this scenario, like we're sitting pretty well with everything. I'm looking to see if there's something I can do uh, potentially in mid lane or if I see uh, the enemy jungler somewhere in the river. Uh, Kane probably just back because we saw him in mid a moment ago. Uh, so we'll keep that in mind. Anyway, as we were talking about in terms of the laning phase and how you want to be thinking about it, then keeping it around the middle portion of the uh, the lane can be a really good advantage for you because it's going to give you that room to actually run down your opponents. You are not that good at pushing in uh, or, or at punishing people under turrets. So this is something you want to keep in mind. All right, right here we do see Kane coming in. I am going to probably die here. I'm waiting for my stuff so I can jump. But I'm just sitting in a full stun. That was a really nice play, to be honest. Uh, not that I couldn't have done better here. Definitely could. But it was a it was a pretty clean play. And uh, Alistar coming in pretty clutch with his jump. That really put us in a bad si situation. Alright, so I'm just going to have a look here. I think we'll actually just go Berserkers. And we'll go into the Collector. There we go. Alright. So... This actually brings us to something I think is pretty interesting and something that you should know with Samira. Samira is extremely hard, hard countered by champions with a lot of CC. So something like an Alistar is actually something Samira really, really struggles with in general because of the fact that she can very easily get interrupted in her ult. And seeing as she has this short range, you really got to be thinking about when you actually do go in because... You can very easily uh, like mess yourself up by going in and then getting stunned. So you got to kind of count the enemy's uh, stuns in your head and keeping a good eye on how things are going. All right. So let me just clean up the, the talk about how the, basically the laning. So if you are really struggling, then let the enemy push you on your turret and go ahead and farm as, as well as you can in there. Stay safe. It's better for you to farm safely wait for the right opportunity rather than going up, like just trying to push in and getting punished and killed several times because this is not going to be putting you in a better situation um in terms of comms to play with i think generally speaking something like an autolos lona 
Uh, these kind of things are absolutely amazing. Here, we're playing with a Senna. In my opinion, not my favorite thing. The good thing potentially about playing with a Senna is, however, that she does have a lot of uh, extra healing. And she does bring some poke to the lane and some extra range, which potentially can punish them a little bit if they step out of line. But in my opinion, uh, getting a bit of CC is a lot better, not only for the uh, laning phase, but also for as we move into the mid to late game, because this is where uh, Samira, in my opinion, really, really strives in terms of her pure potential for carrying team fights, because this is this is where she's insane. Like, yes, Samira is not bad in early game, but in my opinion, you don't pick this champion for early game. You pick her for mid to late game. You pick her for her absolute insane snow potential. But the fact that she's like a bit like a Katarina and Yasu gathered into one. And if people disrespect her, you can take down their whole freaking team in a fight. If she, they don't remember uh, to take care of her pretty quickly. Um, so this is something, in my opinion, you want to keep in mind when playing her. Even though she's good in early game, this is where I see most people actually messing up with her. Is is playing too aggressive in early game, messing up too much there. And by that, never really getting into the game. Where if they just played a bit more safer and a bit more consistent, they would actually go ahead and be really strong in probably most of their games to the mid to late game. And being able to carry those games. Alright. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is do remember that your W actually can give you two stacks of your combo points. So the way you want to be thinking about the laning phase here is that whenever we can, we want to try and poke our opponents using our Q. Um, this will start building up our combo points. We do have to make unique attacks in order to build up combo points, meaning that a unique attack could be an Q and then an auto and then another Q, right? Uh, so we do have to make these these very right here i'm actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna try and and punish them a little bit i'm not gonna be able to fully get this ali did you use old so that's great instead i was just gonna make sure we got a little bit extra at the farm uh i think kane is coming up here we do have our cassocks oh he's actually on jungle or on uh andrega's amazing all right, so I'm going to pull back a little so I don't get one shot by this uh, Kane potentially. Kha'Zix does have Smite, so this should be a free Drake. Uh, there's no way they can, they can contest, but he can, of course, steal. Not that much I can do about this one. Right there, we're going to go ahead. We're going to ult that. All right, I am going to die because of the massive stuns, but we did quite a lot there, and our W was really, really useful. So... As we talked about, or as we were just talking about, your W can actually give you two combo points. It doesn't do this by default. The way this works is basically that you use your W, then you use your E while your W animation is going on, and then your W will actually hit again at the end of it. And this means you do a W, uh, you get a combo point at the beginning of the W, then you E, and then you get another combo point for the second part of it. Um, a lot of people actually don't know this and utilize it. In this specific fight, we did not utilize it. But that was because we did something much more important. And that was that we blocked the brand old. This was my primary concern. I saw that coming out. I instantly just blocked it off. And that really helped out our team. And yes, we ended up dying. But they used all of their resources in order to get us down. And they ended up like lo losing that fight pretty significantly. So it's something that you want to keep in mind that, yes, your W can mean two combo points for you. But even better is if you can block something that is really, really like fight winning. So like an or an old, a brand old like we just did there or something along those lines. So really keep in mind what is it you want to use your W for and what kind of scenario. Like kind of try and play things out in your head first. Like best case scenario what do you want to use it on and i'm not saying just hold on to it for that but try to think about are you going to be putting yourself in a situation where you you are going to potentially be able to block the brand old if so that's a huge thing to do like that is immensely game changing or at least fight changing uh because we all know how a brand old can instantly turn a fight uh like on its on its head like really do think about this 
All right, let me just recap a few things from the early game. So the early game, play safe on their turret if you are uh, in a disadvantage. So if the enemy team is doing or the enemy bot lane is stronger than you are and you're not able to duel them, if they are shoving you on the turret and you are able to duel them, then look for the right time. Make sure you're healthy. And especially if you're playing with a good engaged support or waiting for your jungler and kind of wait for that moment. Don't just go all in and coin flip it. Uh, and that's what we want to strive away from. And this is where a lot of things go wrong on this champion is a lot of people just think that she's naturally stronger. So they just coin flip matches and sometimes they go 50 50 they win they get ahead then they do it again and they get more ahead or they do it uh and they fall behind and then they keep doing it and then they fall more behind which is why that pretty often you see this champ either being super fed or quite the opposite uh so do think about this that try to be much more consistent try to to think more about what are you playing are you playing with an all-in champ if so what are they playing if they're playing a poke comp i think this is a very very nice thing like for a lot of people i see this uh that they don't really know the basics of in my opinion the basics of a laning phase in bot lane is as an example if you're playing if the enemy is playing let's say a army or maybe it's like a soraka or an army or something else together with a caitlin say that i'm not saying caitlin is bad in all ins but compared to something like a samira on top of Le a leona and if you guys jump in you will nine out of ten times win that engage because of how freaking strong uh let's see if i can actually do this it's gonna be a little bit cheesy should be able to uh to just yeah i was a little bit greedy but i just want to make sure we get a little fit here just want to make sure we do get a little fit it did cost our flash though. Alright, I see Kane moving in on us, so I'm gonna move the heck away because Kane is not something to be uh to to <laughs> to deal with uh on one on one, but our Cassix can be can definitely take him. He now will use old. I'm gonna try and catch up. Probably won't be able to though. I should have dodged that one though. Alright. Anyways, all right, so I feel like we've kind of settled on the early game. Early game, uh, play safe if you're in disadvantage. If they push you on the turret and you're not necessarily in disadvantage, still focus on your farm. If your enemy or if your support allows it, try and go for those all ins on those type of comps, especially if you're playing an all in comp into a poke comp, then you're in a much or a sustain comp, then you're in a much better situation. In terms of uh, the of the lane, you want to try and keep in the middle. This will give you room to run down your opponents. If you push them on their turret, which you can, then you need to be aware of where their jungler is and their mid laner. This is quite essential because otherwise you'll very, very quickly get, pu get punished really, really hard. All right. So that was those things. So that's kind of enough for early game. Let's talk about what we do once we move into the mid to late game. So in the mid to late game, we, as all other ADCs, more or less, want to try to move into the mid lane and we want our mid laner to move to the side lanes. The reason why we want to do this is because this allows us to be closer to the objectives and thereby we're able to help out our team win essential things in the game. And just for those of you who don't know why we want to be there as an ADC, it's because we have a support where two players Having two players close to a Drake, a Baron, a Rift is much better than having one. I feel like this, in a sense, is quite basic math. Um, so we were, by being in the middle lane, we are naturally closer to these objectives and thereby we're in a much better situation. Um, if, however, what happens here, if this happens where your, uh, your mid lane does go in here and actually just... Uh, straight up doesn't want to go to side lane then we might have to uh to rotate to side lanes ourselves the reason why we have to do this is because it's very bad for us to be uh two or being three players in the mid lane meaning that we're not going to be getting the xp and we're not going to be getting the gold especially as an adc you're very dependent on gold because of the fact that your items are quite expensive and you scale really hard with your items uh, much more than any other champion. It's much more like your items are so 
essential or much more essential. And this is why you see pro gamers or pro players trying to funnel a lot of their gold into uh, your, your ADC. This is also the reason why we even have a support as an ADC. The reason why we have a support is that we're super weak early. We become really strong later in the game. So we have a support player, which only job is to, or more or less only job, is to protect us and help us get gold so we can get really strong and, and carry the game. All right, so right here, we should be able to uh, to get that one very nicely. Our team is luckily doing pretty well in this game, but I really want, hope we can get into a fight where I can show you guys the full potential of this champion and just like how freaking devastating she can be. Um, all right, so for the mid to late game, as we talked about, you want to be in the middle lanes, so you're closer to the objectives. This also means that your objective in the mid to late game is and only is to uh, to play around team fighting and objectives. You're not going to be wandering off for uh, some solo kill in general. Well, you can duel uh, quite a few ADCs if they're on their own. But generally speaking, the risk is not really worth it. Uh, in my opinion, you should much rather just focus on the basics, the fundamentals and once the, the fights break out, because Samira is by nature a team fighter, she's extremely good at team fighting. Um, this is where you can use your old, and you can absolutely shred a, a full team so freaking quickly. So think about this. Think about what kind of champ she is. She is her kid is made as a team fighter. Um, so use this to your advantage. Wait for the fights to break out, and make sure that you win those instead. Going off on a coin flip play on some player in, in a lane is usually not worth it unless you really know what kind of cooldowns they have. Because there's always the chance that they make a flash play. Maybe there was an opponent you didn't think of or something else. And as we talked about with Samira, she's either pretty much one or the other. Either she's really strong and she can be devastating for the enemy team. Or number two, we're sitting on way too much gold by the way. Or number two is that she's going to be completely and utterly useless. Um... When we start moving into the team fights, and this is something we do want to keep in mind, is that in team fights it is quite uh, essential. We really need to get here. Uh, oh, they, I don't think they started it actually. Severe spot side. Never mind. They're just war cleaning wards. Um, the thing with Samira in team fights is that we talk, as we talked about, she's pretty hard countered by crowd control. I am not saying, and I want to make this clear, I'm not saying that you cannot play her into comps with a lot of crowd control i'm just saying it's really difficult and the reason why it's really really difficult is because of the fact that well right here i'm gonna be building up my combo points as much as i can all right we're gonna try and get out of this um and this is exactly what you could see as well like how how much we're struggling with uh with crowd control again i'm still gonna be able to help at range there we go. All right. Um, but she is really hard countered by crowd control. As an example, you can see right here against the Riven, Alistar, etc. The second that uh, I popped my ult, I instantly got interrupted because they knew if they didn't do that, I would actually just go ahead and kill all three of them. And we had to kind of just fiddle a whole way out of that one. It was quite a difficult situation to get out of. And I wasn't 100% sure we would get out. Um, but she had, she does have a, a pretty slippery kit that makes it difficult for the enemy to actually, uh, actually shut you down instantly. Um, but yeah, again, uh, this, I feel like it was perfect because in a way it showed exactly what I mean with playing against crowd control. The only, or the way that you're going to deal with this is that you have to kind of keep track in your head. What have they used? Can you go in with your old now, etc. In this situation, I felt like I had to go in because I was already in a situation where I was half caught, meaning that I didn't really have any way out. I'm, my only way out was, was going in, right? I know that sounds weird, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like, um, so yeah. But it fortunately, it worked out pretty well. We got out. We also killed the Riven by kiting a little bit back, or we helped with it. I didn't do it, like, solo. Um... All right, I want to not take too much damage from this. 
I should have blocked the brand all the earlier. I saw it way too late. And again, all right. So let's talk about how to actually play team fighting. What do you want to do in a team fight? So, as you might imagine, then you of course want to try and set your your uh, set Samira up to using her old and thereby completely annihilating the enemy team if possible. What I see the most common mistake is that you like the point is not going all in from the very start a lot of people do this they build up their combo points and then instantly jump in and fire off their ult this is not the right play to do and this again brings us back to what we talked about just a second ago that you need to track or try and keep in in your head what kind of uh, crowd control and cooldowns your enemies have because if you do the thing is with your ult is in order to really do anything with it you need to be close but if you're close, you're also much more likely to get shut down if they have their cooldowns. So, this really brings us to the part of Samir being an extremely high skill cap champion. Where having or looking at uh, not only your own cooldowns, but actually... God dang it, I saw something break out just as we backed. Uh, that was really unfortunate. This second I my back ended, this fight broke out. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. That is actually devastating. But anyway, I think it's... Again, I kind of like this because it is going to probably extend the game a little bit. Give us more time to talk about things. And secondly, it's also going to allow me um, to hopefully show off just how good uh, Samira is in a full-born teamfight. Because right now, unfortunately, our team has been doing pretty decently. They're not doing absolutely amazing, but they're not doing bad either. Which, again, has meant that it requires less of us and I actually really want to show off the, the pure like uh destruction skill of this champion right here i'm gonna try and build up my points I'm, I'm gonna go back and help this i'm not gonna chase after a ribbon i'm never gonna catch her and if i am it's more because she's playing bad than me playing good so we're not gonna we're not even gonna try all right, right here, I feel like this might be the right the right choice as well. Going directly for this. Their Kane is dead. We can definitely go for a Baron play. So let's go ahead. We'll ward up around us. I'll actually remove this right really quickly. Might as well give them a little bit less mobility to go down and help out. All right. God dang it, they actually surrender. Okay, so this was really i that's this really sucked to be honest i really hate that this happened because i felt like we we're really getting to a point where i could really show some of this stuff off and we could hopefully get like a quattro or a penta or something along those lines anyway let me just finish off how you're actually playing the team fight so in team fighting you generally speaking want to stay at the back line and you want to be using your out attacks and your cues i know this sounds weird and you might be like don't i just want to jump in no the reason why you don't just want to jump in it's because whenever you do jump in, you're very, very, very vulnerable. You want to wait till you build up points for your old or close to. Um, and then you want to track the enemy cooldowns, meaning their crowd controls. You're going to be looking at has Leona used her old, has she used her normal stun, etc. You want to be looking at those things. Whenever the answer is yes, or you can see that they're too occupied, kind of tunneling in on another teammate, that's where you jump in. Then you jump in, use your ult, completely annihilate their team, and they won't be able to shut you down quick enough. Um, so this is what you want to be thinking about. You want to be using it at the right time. Uh, one thing that I, did, that I did forget to mention, especially for the early game, is whenever you do go for all-ins, try to get up close into melee range. The reason why you want to do this is because your passive using your sword basically allows you to deal more damage. It, it, it increases your damage not only on your basic attacks, but actually also on your Qs. So make sure that in all ins that you use your, your abilities to get up close. Also, uh, in terms of using your abilities, then think about every time you get a takedown. A takedown is either a kill or assist, then it actually instantly recharges or resets your e and this is quite insane for you because this makes you a lot more slippery so when you do to jump in in a team fight or something else then look at who's low try and get them down instantly go for that target if it's a target that's somewhat squishy that you can kill quickly try and get that down because it's gonna reset your e and you can jump again and you can even like this will allow you to potentially jump in use your old jump out again 
and or or jump to another position whenever they try to 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 reach you so really do think about this uh, i hope some of the stuff in this video was helpful to you guys if it was make sure to hit that like button for the youtube algorithm and if you are new in here make sure to go down below click that subscribe button join into our awesome community and lastly, uh, yeah, if you want to hang out with me live, go to twitchtv mips underscore live. But that is going to be it for this video. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.